Hi, it's Jeff Dyson from Director Showcase. I am uh, talking through uh, Skype with uh, Brian Stith from Sound Projections. Uh, Brian, appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, it's nice to be here. And uh, obviously Sound Projections, uh, the creators of The Voice Machine, a great sound unit. Um, Brian, let's just go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, some people have been asking, what is the difference between The Voice Machine PG and the PGX? Uh, it's a few differences. Obviously, they're both Sure Wirelesses. That's the, dem the the same between them, which we feel is very important because Sure is probably one of the best wireless com uh, companies in the country. Uh, the difference between the two systems is the 10-channel wireless, the PG, has internal antennas. This means that with an internal antenna system, no matter whether it's ours or somebody else's, we can typically get about 150-foot distance from the unit in an open field. The PGX, which is 90 channels, we'll get into that in a minute, but it uses external antennas. And the external antenna allows us to practically double the distance uh, in an open area, roughly 350 to 400 feet. Uh, this becomes very important when you're looking at this, like for a marching band, for example. An open field is one thing, but when you get in people on that field, that's going to shorten the distance up. And that's because the... Uh, Radi wireless frequencies does not transmit through water, which is why submarines come up to the surface, and human bodies are mostly water. So you get two or 300 kids out on the field, you're going to maybe cut that distance of transmission in half. Now, the PG wireless is going to get you about 75 feet, and that might not be far enough when you're at one end of the football field and that system's on the other. Where the PGX, you're still going to get 150 to 200 feet distance, so really, wherever you are located out on that football field, whether you're using a wireless headset or converting your metronome to a wireless transmission so you can have that out on the field, you know you're going to be able to make that distance with the uh, PGX wireless. However, we know some schools are on a budget. And some schools are, are much smaller and don't have that many kids on the field. And the 10-channel uh, the can easily probably do the job, especially for those directors that like to have the sound system at their feet where they're only five feet away from the unit. It's not going to make a difference. The uh, other feature behind those two is the 10-channel wireless gives you the digital display readout, but you have to manually change the channel to find an open frequency. What's really nice about this, though, as compared to other companies, is as you're changing the channels, if you, say, go to channel 4 and there's something interfering with that channel, be it a television station or another wireless in the area, the center bar will actually flash, indicating, hey, there's something here already. Turn it to a different channel. So as you're turning it, you get to a channel where the whole number is flashing and the center bar isn't, then you know that it's an open channel and you're going to be okay with that unit. Then you have to open the, the uh, transmitter up via the belt pack and then match the number to the system. With the 90 channel unit, it's automatic. When you turn the system on, it will always turn on to the previous channel that you had. But if you need to have interference for any reason whatsoever, you simply press the search button and it automatically will find the best open frequency in the area. Then it's an infrared transmission from the receiver to the transmitter to reprogram the transmitter. The whole thing takes about 10 seconds at most if you have any interference whatsoever. So those are the two key features as to the differences between them, but mostly it has to do with the transmission. And if you're working with marching bands, that's a big deal in my book. Right. And now, you know, with, with all of those extra added features and benefits of the, the 90 channel, um, the PGX versus the 10 channel, the PG, um, it, it sounds like it's going to be a huge difference in price. Um, what's, what's the estimated difference between those two units? Uh, the estimated difference between the two units is really only retails for about $300 difference between the two. Uh, sometimes you get, I know you guys give a little better breaks, so I always have to talk retail, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> Which is good for the, which is good for everyone. Right. Uh, to me, it's worth every penny. I think it truly is. It really is able to give you that difference, the distance that you need in order to guarantee, basically guarantee not drop out. And the last thing you want is to be halfway through a rehearsal or anything to that effect and have the wireless drop out on you. It doesn't make anybody happy. So I would always recommend the 90 channel if the budget's there. But again, if it isn't, I understand totally and, uh, the, the voice machine with the 10 channels will easily do a majority of the work as long as you understand your limitations. Now, whether it's a budgetary concern or if you only think that you only need one channel, you can opt to just get one single microphone receiver in the back of the voice machine. Is that correct? 
Yeah, the the system has many options. You can have. Uh, we're one of the only people that can. We ought, Well, I take it back. We offer up to two wireless systems in the unit, or I should say, up to two options in the unit. The first option being a single wireless, be it the 10 channel or the 90 channel. Now we offer a second option. Now that second option could be a second wireless unit, which is really nice, especially for larger bands with multiple directors, or again, using one, use one channel for the headset, one for the metronome. But for the smaller bands, maybe we also, instead of the second wireless, you could add an MP3 player. Now, understand, it is, as I tell people, it's a bullhorn in a box. It's not going to give you a nice full sound. It's more of like your sound system's in the football field. However, it does allow you to have playback. And you would just take a, a memory stick and load it with MP3 music, plug it into the MP3 player, and press play. This could be beneficial to you. Instead of having the kids play the music while they're learning the steps on the field, you could actually have a recording of their at, uh, in the studio or something like that, you have a recording of their sound, and then you could be playing the music through the MP3 player, and they would actually be learning the steps, not just with the metronome, but actually with the music itself without having to worry about playing. They're just learning the movement. Turn the music off, let them play, and go from there. Excellent. Okay, now let's move down the back of the unit a little bit more. We've got uh, mic in, line in. Um, there's a siren feature? Yes. We, we have that because, again, this is a battery-powered sound system, so this could be used as an emergency PA for any particular reason. I mean, let's look at what's unfortunately has happened in Japan. Uh, having a system immediately to be able to make an announcement in case of a power outage, earthquake, anything like that, that's very important. The siren we use for, again, an emergency. You can turn that thing on, and they'll hear you anywhere. Or if you're using this for, let's say, a track and field event, you could actually use that as a starting noise if you needed to. So the siren's a nice little feature to have. When you push it, it goes on. As soon as you let go, it turns off. It doesn't have a locking feature or anything like that. It does get pretty loud. You don't want to be in front of it when you're standing <laughs> turning it on. But uh, it is there for an emergency purpose, and it's a really nice feature to have. Excellent. So let's talk about the inputs. We've got the XLR quarter inch. Mm -hmm. XLR. I know of very few systems out there that actually offer an XLR input for a microphone. I don't know of many at all, actually. Uh, we wanted to be able to allow you to have a balanced, regular handheld microphone to plug in without having to have a special cable or anything like that. Heck, every, every school has microphones around with cables. Just plug it in and go. So that's a really nice feature to have to, if you need that extra microphone input. Again, you could still do the uh, national anthem. might be a little tinny, but you can still sing through it if you don't have a, a wireless microphone connected to it. The quarter-inch input, that's a nice input to have if you have an MP3 player of any sort, whether it's an iPod or anybody else's. There are cables. They're very inexpensive to be able to plug your headphone output of your MP3 player to quarter-inch mono input into our system. So if you don't, if you use the two wireless feature, instead of having the MP3 player, you could use your own personal uh, iPod MP3 player and go into that quarter-inch input. We give you that flexibility. And now so, for the, uh, the line-out, um, I see a line-out and a speaker-out. What's the difference between those two? That's correct. Actually, there's one line out and two speaker outputs. Uh, the line output would be good if you wanted to connect it to another powered system. Maybe you have another voice machine. That's how you would tie the two of them together. One would be the master, one would be the, the slave, for lack of a better word. Uh, the other two units are speaker outputs. Now, we actually offer the ability right up front to connect three of these systems together all at one time. So you would have the main unit and two companion speakers, which really could fill up like the back side of the football field. So you could hear it from the 20-yard line to the 20-yard line. The other feature we have is, notice there's two outputs. So you could put this system, the main unit, in the middle and go left and right out to both speakers. But the companion speaker actually has an in and an out. So you could also take our powered speaker and put it at one end and run a speaker cable to the first companion speaker, and then from that one to a secondary companion speaker with no problem. And are the companion speakers powered as well, or are those just unpowered speakers that you're plugging the line into? Yeah, those would be unpowered. Much mm. lighter, much simpler, no amplifier, no battery, nothing like that. So it's very simple, lightweight, unpowered speakers that you would be plugging into. Excellent. And now the big question here that everybody will probably be asking, uh, battery life. Tell me about uh, how long the battery life on the voice machine Battery life on the voice machine is a lot. Uh, boy, that's a word price there. That's uh, a technical term, right? Yeah. That's a technical term. <laughs> a lot. Uh, we're finding any, we can get at least up to 14 hours of life on a battery charge. 
And the reason being is we actually put a little larger battery in there than most. Uh, as an example, we put in a, a 9 amp hour battery, which means, simply put, if you were using an amp of power, you would the battery would take 9 hours to discharge. Where other companies like, uh, well, I'll use the Megavox. I know you guys do carry that. They use a 5.4 amp hour battery. So basically, it's about half the amount of time that they can use in theirs compared to ours just simply for the amp hour life. Excellent. So I know that when we spoke at one of the shows, you had made a big mention about uh, a wall wart um, of your system versus other systems. And when you were first trying to explain it to me, I kind of looked at you like you had three heads because I had never heard the, the terminology a wall wart before. <laughs> so why don't you explain a little bit about what that is and then the benefit of it? Sure, no problem. Uh, wall wart, simply put, that's that little power transformer that you get in a lot of the other sound systems. Uh, Anchors has one. They, they, their power is not internal. You have this big square box that you plug into the wall, and it looks like a big bump on the wall, hence wart, wall wart. Uh, and then you plug the other little connector into the back of the, of the unit. And a lot of other companies do that. Uh, so in a sense, you've got like two ends of the power cord and a, a, a box that will sit on the ground somewhere in the middle. Nowadays, they do it that way. It used to be the box went right into the wall, but, yeah, for protection, they actually put the box somewhere in the middle. That is correct. Okay. We, on the other hand, we build the power supply of that box internally to the sound system. So the power supply is already there. You don't have to go out and get it separate. So, basically, we use just a standard uh, IC computer cable like you would use to plug in your computer to the wall. We did this for a couple of reasons. One, wall warts have a tendency to get lost and broken. So then you have to go back to that specific manufacturer to get a new one, which could take time and money and everything else, where it's as simple as, number two, with our power cord, if you lose it or break it, which they're hard to do, as anybody would know, but if that were to happen, you can go down to any Staples, Radio Shack, any place else, and very quickly grab, buy a new power cord and be back up and running. In the worst case, you can get into your office and unplug your computer for an hour. <laughs> so you know, we wanted to, to give the customer the ability to take care of themselves as much as possible. We love dealing with the customers. I love talking to them on a daily basis. But I, I don't want to be talking to them about having to find a wall wart or having to find something and next day airing the thing and having to pay $50 for a power supply when they could go down to Staples and spend 5 bucks and buy a new cord. Perfect. Well, um, that's uh, uh, everything that you've that you've given us today. Very, very uh, uh, informative. Was there anything else that we kind of missed? No, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, again, I think the important thing that I really would want to hit on is, is especially if a, if a marching director is looking at this, is that external antenna of the wireless. Uh, you know, we have internal antennas on the 10-channel wireless, just like uh, Anchor's Megavox, for example. Uh, both of them are going to get you about the same distance. Again, it has to do with the physics of the antenna. With our external antenna, it's probably the closest thing that let's say the Long Ranger had. Now, Long Ranger was a great product. It had a wireless transmission. We figured about 700 feet, which no one could touch that. It was a great right. product. But as most everybody knows at this point, the Long Ranger's been discontinued. And I really feel that our 90-channel wireless is, with the external antennas, is the closest that can compete with that. At the three to 400-foot range, we're really a, a head and shoulders above everybody else as compared to the way the Long Ranger was against our 90 channel, for example. Right. But the Long Ranger had its shortcomings, too. It had that external power supply. It had all of these other wall warts and things like that. But again, with our system, it's a roto-molded case, as we call it. It's a single unit with a six-year warranty. You can drop it and pick it up and keep working again. Things just don't break on it. I've al we've always kind of considered ourselves the Mercedes-Benz of the industry. Uh, we're not the cheapest. We'd be the first to say that. But what you're buying is the quality. You know, six-year warranty on the unit, two years on the options. Uh, you're not going to worry about this thing breaking tomorrow or having an issue in the future. These things last for a long time. You pay a little more for it because we do make these things in America. They are made in California. So, you know, we, we take pride in that also of trying to, to stay as much as we can in, the, in, in America. Uh, MP3 player, obviously, is China because there is an American company that makes one, which there was. But there you go. So... You pay a little more for it, but we hope that with the with the money you pay, you get the value of, of the money that you spend. Excellent. Well, Brian Sith, uh, Sound Projections, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. I appreciate being here. Thank you.